Hi everyone, my name is Pada and this is Cuisine Tour. What is your priority when you travel abroad? Well for me, I want to taste as many local dishes as possible. It's because the food of a country doesn't only contain the country's nature, but also its culture and even its natural spirit. So even though you're not on an actual tour right now, I can guarantee you, if you stay with me on Cuisine Tour, you will have some fun. Enjoy various tastes from around the world on Cuisine Tour. The cuisine of style Japanese kaiseki. The simple dishes of the grasslands of Mongolia. Japanese cuisine has an extensive history and has been developed in various forms. There are about 20,000 Japanese restaurants around the world and they've drawn in a global fan base. The Japanese cuisine of Kaiseki best reflects Japanese culinary culture. Kaiseki is a cuisine typically associated with the upper class and formal occasions. It's used for official banquets or weddings. Kaiseki is a food that can be used to enjoy food. In addition, especially in events, it's used to Kaiseki is similar to Western-style full-course meals. Starting with the appetizers, the zensai, it ends with the dessert, mizumono. It's one dish per course. Ground citron is sprinkled onto the salmon eggs. The citron adds a scent and eliminates the fishy smell of salmon. The sesame bean curd is topped with a sauce, wasabi and salt pickled cherry blossoms. Southern suke tops the vegetable with a fresh sauce. Zensai stimulates the tongue, making sure it enjoys the rest of the meal. Tasting of the sea's freshness, sashimi is an essential part of kaiseki. Only the best fish is used and the elaborate techniques of the chef's knife determine the quality of the dish. Sprouts neutralize poison and nothing tops sashimi with sprouts and wasabi. So how can the suimono tell you how good a chef is? The broth used in the suimono is used for all the course's dishes. And in the end, the broth is what determines the flavor of all the dishes in the course. Fried meatballs, brown seaweed and bamboo shoots are placed in a bowl. The chef pours his carefully cooked broth and closes the lid, and it's the patron's turn to decide whether the food is excellent. The various kaiseki cooking techniques let guests experience many kinds of tastes. Yakimono is all about the broiling technique. Miso is a traditional Japanese sauce based on grains, and it's lightly coated onto the fish right before it's broiled in a barbecue style. The important thing to remember when cooking the fish is not to overcook it so it retains the original soft texture. Place the chicken meatballs, sweet potato paper and sauce and ta-da, your yakimono is ready. Now it's time for the nimono. Nimono focuses on bringing out the original flavor of its ingredients. The vegetable is boiled once again and the arrowroot starch regulates the sauce's consistency. How about adding the fruity scent of citron? This completes the nimono.
You can also taste an array of fried delicacies with kaiseki. Fresh shrimp, fatsia and bamboo shoots are dipped in flour. They taste their best when fried at a temperature of 180 degrees. The shrimp and vegetables have transformed into something delicious in the boiling pot of oil. Sunomono helps eliminate oily tastes. The sauce made with vinegar, sugar, soy sauce and rice wine is the star of the dish. Mizumono is the equivalent of a Western dessert. Sherbet served with the latest cooking techniques and modern styles that completes the kaiseki course. All kaiseki ingredients are seasonal. In this sense, kaiseki combines taste and nutrition. Kaiseki is especially great in the spring. This is because there are many kinds of nutritious vegetables containing the freshness of the season. The fish that's used in kaiseki is carefully selected based on season, region and freshness. You can sense the chef's efforts to maintain the original flavour of each ingredient used. But even the best quality fish won't achieve its potential without the right knife. Kaiseki is all about aesthetic beauty. Tastes Colours and shapes come together in perfect harmony. It's almost hard to decide whether it's a cuisine or a beautiful piece of Eastern art. The cooking techniques are truly fascinating. People also call kaiseki a feast for the eyes. Kaiseki embodies the tradition and culture of Japan. It's a cuisine that provides both the mouth and eyes with an unforgettable feast. Mongolia is located in the northern region of the Plateau of Central Asia and is the highest country in the world. The descendants of Genghis Khan, Mongolians are a nomad nation raising livestock. The diet of the Mongolians is based on dairy and meat products. There's a wide variety of dairy products based on horse or sheep's milk. Mongolians eat a lot of meat. The fat from this helps them get through the cold winter. Most Mongolian cuisines are preserved in its original form. Let's take a closer look at the natural style cuisine of the grasslands of Mongolia. Harahag is a traditional Mongolian dish. To make harahag, you need to select a sheep or goat freely grazing the fields. Livestock is very precious, so harahag is only served to the most special of guests. Once the meat is ready, you need to heat the stones, place them in the fire and wait until they're heated. When the stones are warm, place them with the lamb and various vegetables in a steamer and cook for about an hour. The method of using heated stones when cooking was used when the ancient Mongolian army was on the march. After one hour, the delicious looking harahag is ready. It's fascinating to see meat cooked without any exterior heat. 
The harahag is cooked with the heat of the stones, which takes away the smell and gives it a simple taste. No spices are used, and the rich taste of the lamb meat is enhanced. It's known that meat is the main diet source of Mongolians. However, breakfast and lunch consist of tea and flour-based foods, and dinner includes meats, noodles and rice. Let's take a look at Mongolian dishes made with flour. Goril Teshul is a Mongolian-style noodle. The dough is made flat and thin and cut in appropriate sizes. When the water is boiling, put in the lamb, various vegetables and noodles seasoned with salt and pepper. Just cook it until it's ready to eat and you have a delicious goral teshul. Horshora is a Mongolian style snack. Meat and vegetables are chopped. These are going to be placed in a thin flour wrap, so they need to be cut in small pieces. The ingredients are placed in a bowl, seasoned with salt and pepper, and mixed until ready. When making the thin flour wrap for Hyoshura, first make the dough long and cut it in appropriate sizes. The cut dough is flattened and made into round shapes. Place the mix of lamb meat and vegetables inside the flour wrap and close it. Make the dumpling flat so the ingredients inside are cooked well. Cook until the outside is a light brown colour and taste the crispy outside and savoury inside of Hyoshora. This is a dish that can be enjoyed anytime, anywhere in Mongolia. Gambil is a Mongolian style bread. Gambil is easy to make. Add sugar to the flour dough and flatten it out in a round shape. The gambil is complete when it's cooked until the crust is light brown in a frying pan. The dish resembles tortillas. To make sute chai, take white milk and boil it in an iron pot before adding tea leaves. In the dry climate of Mongolia, people drink it instead of water. To make sute chai, place tea leaves in boiling water and season it with salt. Pour in milk and stir. Sute chai tastes savoury and Mongolians enjoy it because it washes away the taste of meat dishes that contain a lot of fat. The nomadic life is simple. Mongolian cuisine reflects the rustic simplicity of its nation. It's a cuisine that preserves the non-artificial taste of the grasslands. They say that eating well can prevent many illnesses and allows you to live a long and healthy life. Well, what is a healthy life? It's all about your eating habits and to watch out what you're actually eating every day. 
What is today's healthy ingredient? The first hint is the top 10 foods for your health. Well, basically, in the year 2002, Thai magazine said that this ingredient is one of the top 10 healthiest foods in the world. Do you know what it is? The second hint is Allison. Well, Allison kind of sounds familiar, but what it is, I don't really know. I think it's the substance in our ingredient, but not very helpful, right? Let's have a look at the third one. This one is really, really easy. Scares away vampires. Now you should know what it is, right? It's really easy now. Our ingredient of today is garlic. Well, let's go to cooking literally. We are going to have a full garlic based dish for you today. The appetizer, the main dish and even the dessert will be all garlic based. To start off with our garlic soup today, we are going to start with the water and the garlic and the beef and the vegetable cubes. Because it's going to take some time till the garlic is ready, I'm going to do it first. So just take some water and put it in the pot. And then we're gonna get, add the garlic and the blocks. Just go easy with the crust, take it off. First of all, we're gonna add the olive oil and then we put the sliced bread in it. So just have a look at our bread, it's really crispy brown. So I'm gonna open it up and now we have to mash the garlic. So first of all, I take the garlic out of this soup. So we're mashing our garlic and we put it back into the soup. So now the, our soup has been boiling for about two minutes. Let's finish our first dish. Oh, it smells really, really good. So we're gonna take a couple of spoons. Then we're gonna add the gluttons with some parsley. We will be doing our main dish for today. It's gonna be an Italian spaghetti dish. It's called olio et olio. Well, let me introduce the ingredients we're gonna use first. Again, we're gonna use some garlic. It has a very distinctive smell. But you definitely need it if you want to cook an Italian dish, right? The other ingredients are, we have some red pepper. We will use olive oil again and some salt. And we're gonna add some parsley to it. So let's start off with the noodles. When we boil them, make sure you have plenty of water in your pot. But first of all, you have to add some salt. So we add the salt and then we put the noodles in. So our noodles have been boiling for about 10 minutes now. They should be ready. So first we take them out. Mmm, they smell really, really nice. I think they're perfect. But actually, if you want to find out if you have the noodles are ready or not, I basically taste them. I like them al dente. Al dente means they are not too soft and they are not too hard. So let me try. Perfect. That we save about 50 cc of the boiling noodle water for later. The reasons why Italians use garlic so much in their cookings is actually because of the fragments of garlic. Well, let me give you some information about garlic. It is true that it's very, very beneficial for your health. But at the same time, it smells a little bit and it's kind of hard to be eaten in a raw form. Well, what can you do? So if you want to eat garlic anyways, there are other ways to prepare it. You can heat or broil it, or if you want to, you can even prickle it with soy sauce or vinegar, for example. Well, the best thing about garlic is that its nutrients are not destroyed by heat. That's very, very good. So off to the sauce. Let's start. Well, what we do is we put the olive oil all in the pan, and then we're going to put some garlic into it. So we're going to take about half of it 
put it into the pan and fry it a little bit. Then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna add some red pepper to it. We're gonna add some parsley, about half the amount. What we're gonna do to finish off our sauce is, we're gonna, gonna take some of the spaghetti water we saved and add about two spoons to the sauce. This is giving it a very, very distinctive and special taste. So our sauce is now done. Mmm, really, really delicious. So to finish our dish off, we're gonna add a little bit of our spaghetti. And stir it a little bit. So now we are almost done. To finish our dish, what we're gonna do is add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And voila, ta-ta, the complete dish. So the ingredients we need for garlic honey tea are, of course, garlic and some honey. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna put the garlic into the steamer. So while we're waiting for the garlic to soften, why don't I just tell you a little bit more about garlic? So what are the benefits of garlic? Well, number one, it's a powerful disinfectant. Apart from this, garlic is also known to help treat high blood pressure, diabetes and indigestion. Well, number two is, it helps you retain vigor and recover from stress. You see, apart from allicin, there's another substance in garlic, it's called germanium. When this substance meets vitamin B1, it can absorb infinite amounts of it. So when you feel like really tired, you can tuck into this like a rechargeable battery. Well, benefit number three is, garlic effectively prevents cancer. Organic, germanium and selenium are scientifically proven to help you control to prevent cancer. I think the garlic is soft by now. And start to mash it a little bit. For our garlic and honey paste, we're gonna heat it up a little bit. So, while heating it up, make sure the heat is really right. It shouldn't be too hot. And we stir it a little bit until it gets a little bit thicker. So, after heating up our garlic honey sauce, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put it into a jar. Next is, we're gonna put this into a fridge for about three days. We prepared already some tea for you. So this one has been in our fridge for about three days. And this is what we're gonna use for our garlic honey tea. We take one spoon into a teacup and then we add hot water to it. Garlic honey tea. A healthy table prepared with love. So let me try the dishes I've prepared today. I'm gonna to start off with the garlic soup. Wow, I can feel the benefits of garlic right away. I feel kind of strong and really, really healthy. Ooh. Let's have a try at the spaghetti. This really reminds me of the times when I was a student in Italy. I had so much fun and eating this, oh, all the memories are coming back. This one is really, really good. So what about the tea for dessert? Mm. This one is really good. I think this is the best medicine you can have in the winter time when you have a cold. So if you're wondering what you should cook tonight for your loved ones at home, why don't you try one of those dishes? They're very easy to make and also they're not only healthy but also very nutritious. Wow. 
But that's it for this week's cuisine tour. I hope you had as much fun as me preparing those dishes. If you're wondering what you want to prepare for your loved ones tonight, why don't you try out some of the dishes we prepared together today? There's a British playwright called Mr. Bernard Shaw who once said, There's no love more sincere than a love for food. If you love food as much as I do, let's get into the kitchen. Well, that's it for this week's cuisine tour. I had really much fun doing the show with you, and I hope to see you all next week. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.